So we just concluded uh, the introduction into the tourism uh, sector by Minister Theokhairis, who gave us a fairly optimistic uh, uh, outlook regarding uh, Greece and tourism. And now we're coming to a panel that I consider to be particularly important. All the panels are important, but this panel, uh, again, is dealing with a sector that had the largest contribution to Greek GDP and a sector that has been among the most adversely hit by the pandemic. And I think that uh, investors uh, are looking not just to the day after, but they are looking to the day after the day after. Uh, we may all, uh, you know, have experienced grief this year as, you know, tourism was not very good, but does anybody really uh, doubt that a few years from now, Greece will always be a very attractive, high quality tourism destination. So this panel is here to prove because it is co uh, comprised of a major domestic institutional investor, the Laskaridis family, and also four panelists who are representing major international brands and investors with active involvement in Greece, and they intend to do more. Uh, and without anything, any more uh, delay from me, I will turn it over to Fenya. I would like to thank her and her firm for being a loyal partner. And I'd like to thank you all, thank you ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. And uh, I turn it over to uh, Senya. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Uh, good morning to all in New York. Good evening to all here. I uh, hope you are all safe and well. And thank you so much for investing your time with us this evening. My name is uh, Fenia Panagopoulou. I am a partner of AIS Papadimitriou and Partners Law Firm. And it is my privilege to be the moderator of tonight's panel on tourism and hospitality. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce our panelists. Uh, Mr. Andreas Tapradzis, uh, CEO of Avis Greece. Mr. Leon Avicard, founder and co-owner of Brown Hotels. Mr. Paul Gomopoulos, Senior Managing Director of Heinz and Head of Heinz Greece. Mr. Alejandro Portolas, founding partner and CEO of HIP and Mrs. Chloe Lascaridis, Senior Executive Director of Lamsa Hellenic Hotels. Thank you all for being with us. I, allow me to set the background uh, of our discussion. As uh, Nicholas pointed out, there is no doubt that the impact uh, of the pandemic uh, was severe on tourism and hospitality. The COVID outbreak represents the most significant crisis these industries have had to endure so far. Uh, there is a lot of anxiety about the future, a lot of discussions and debate, as all the stakeholders are preparing uh, for the day after. The anxiety is understandable. Tourism is a main contributor to the growth of the economy in Greece. It has been the most resilient sector during the recession, easing unemployment in the Greek economy in the recent years. In 2019, the best year of tourism so far, uh, the sector contributed directly to the economy more than 7.5 billion euros, according to the data released by the Bank of Greece. The investments in the hospitality increased considerably over the course of 2019, and this was a sign of increasing confidence on the part of investors in the prospects of the Greek economy and tourism. And then came the pandemic. The industry faces a massive challenge, but it's not all doom and gloom. Opportunities have not vanished. Even the darkest of times, we have seen some very important deals. During the pandemic, hospitality was one of the few sectors in Greece that attracted high investment income, uh, hundreds of high investment interest, I'm sorry, and hundreds of million were invested in the purchase, innovation, management, and commercial development of, of hotels. All of our panels, our panels here today have contributed greatly to this development. We have also seen the largest ever private sector asset back securitization and the first to have a green component. Andres, we may want to say more about this. Uh, Greece has not lost its appeal, its uniqueness as a travel destination. So there is every indication that the tourism and hospitality sectors will rebound once the worst of the pandemic is over. The tendency of the predictions is clear. COVID is a temporary disruption. Harsh, yes, but nevertheless temporary. Our panelists will say will ask their valuable insights uh, in the, in the inv in, about the investment experience in Greece and their thoughts on how this major disruption may be turned uh, into an opportunity. Alejandro, um, HIP, Blackstone's hotel investment platform, is the largest owner of hotels in Spain and the third largest investor in the European hotels. It owns more than 60 hotels. 
HIP kicked off its international expansion with the acquisition of five Greek hotel businesses, two in Corfu, two in Zakynthos, and one in Crete. This was in September 2019. And in the last year, HIP has invested substantial capital to renovate and reposition this hotel. Alejandro is the CEO and founding partner of HIP and the leader of this new international path of HIP. Alejandro, can you give us an insight of your investment experience in Greece so far? And what do you think the hospitality environment will look post pandemic? Um, thank you, Denise, and, and thank you everyone to invite me here today. Very happy to talk you know, about Greece. Today, Greece represents a small share uh, of our, of our uh, total investment, but it's, but it's very important for us. We, I mean, we just um, uh, brought a team uh, in Athens. So we have um, an office in, in Athens. Um, also, we have an office in Barcelona, where I am today, and in Balearic Islands and Canary Islands, so where we have a lot of investment there. Greece, we only have five hotels, but the fact that we have an office there really demonstrates how uh, important is Greece for us in the near future. I mean, we really see um, Greece as a very interesting opportunity. Look, the macro trend in Leicester is very clear. It's very clear around the world. And for us, it's very clear in Southern Europe. Uh, obviously, Greece is a very important country there. In our opinion, there exist a lot of opportunities still to buy, transform hotels, to bring new technologies, to, new, new, to bring new brands to reposition the hotels. Uh, so, I mean, obviously mm, uh, our, our experience so, I mean, uh, so far has been positive. I mean, we are, as you just mentioned, transforming one of the hotels we, um, uh, we, we bought. Um, uh, we uh, signed an agreement with, uh, with Ledra uh, uh, to bring, uh, I mean, to bring international brands uh, through franchise to two of our hotels. Then we signed another another agreement with AMR um, to I mean to to, to bring a, I mean another a, a new three brands in in Greece and we have a very interesting pipeline. So it's true that the market has been a little bit closed, uh, mainly uh, the dead market. Now the situation is starting to open again, and my opinion is that we're going to see um, I mean uh, a lot of um, a lot of opportunities here uh, and. And we want to play an important role in Greece in, in the next year. So that's why we are here. That's why, you know, we are still, uh, I mean, we are spending a lot of time and efforts and money there. Um, so we, we think that Greece is a friendly country to do business today, um, much easier than it was before. And, um, and we really want to push to continue to do things. And, and this is our, our objectives. And obviously, Greece, as in other countries, they have some challenges. But I'm sure we will talk later about that. Thank you. Well, and now turning to, to Paul. Paul Hans is one of the largest and most respected real estate organizations in the world. It has a presence in 225 cities in 25 countries, over 144 billion of assets under management. Hans' office in Greece has been very active. Hans is not a newcomer. Uh, they made an acquisition together with Henderson Park. Uh, they acquired the former Lidra Hotel and literally transformed this hotel. Now it's a five-star uh, Grand Hyatt Hotel. And uh, during the last year, uh, in the midst of the pandemic, Heinz and Henderson have acquired uh, a portfolio of five seafront hotels in Crete and a 21,000 square meter site in Vula for the development of a residential, of a residential cell com uh, um, complex. Uh, Paul is a senior managing director and head of Hans Greece and the driving force behind all of these investments. Not uh, bad, Paul, for a year that is supposed to be slow, slow on, <laughs> on investment. Uh, do you want to share with us your opinion on how the hospitality environment will look like post pandemic? And also, of course, share your investment experience in Greece so far? I think um, our experience so far is uh, has been very um, successful and rewarding. Um, I think we had a strategy that there is value to unlock in a lot of these assets through um, not just uh, timing the market and buying 
uh, at the low part of the cycle and selling high. That's not what we do. We want to add value at the asset. So I think uh, we came with that strategy and we showed that we executed it on the Lidra uh, purchase where we've uh, completely repositioned that into the, the Grand Hyatt. And we think that opportunity uh, can play out elsewhere as well. So that's the same strategy that we are uh, executing on the, the Crete hotels. Um, I think the, uh, the path here has been uh, quite challenging. As you say, we're not newcomers. Uh, we've been here and had an offense since 2014. So we've lived through uh, Greece, going through capital controls and Grexit um, and uh, all the, the other uh, drama that we had to live with. So in many ways, I think everyone who was in Greece at that time has kind of been through the, the thick of it, been through war almost. So that's almost given us a little bit of perspective that, okay, so there's a pandemic, you know, uh, we'll, it will survive. I think maybe more so than, than other places that have not been used to such drastic uh, events. Um, looking forward, I think, what will hospitality look like? I don't know. Um, I don't think anyone really knows. I think, you know, we can all make guesses. I don't think I'm smart enough to, to guess what it'll look like. But if I were to step back, I'd say that, you know, humanity tends to adapt. So my personal gut feeling is that nothing will change too dramatically. I think, um, you know, things will change, uh, but people will adapt and, there's something natural about wanting to continue life as it was before. So I think people will still travel. Um, you know, if you draw a parallel to 9-11, um, when it happened, there was a lot of anxiety and uncertainty and, you know, what will happen? The world has completely changed. And I think there are elements, obviously there's a lot more security checks. Terrorism is something which, you know, we are now reading about and always on the radar. But it's not as if people don't travel, you know, people don't go on holidays, uh, business still happens. So I think uh, we will find a way to adapt and the tourism and hospitality industry will be no different. Um, if I were to have to guess, I'd say uh, probably mice uh, business would be maybe more affected uh, in the short term. And that might take longer to revert to what we feel is natural. Uh, I think leisure will probably happen a lot quicker. I think there's a lot of pent up demand from uh, parents uh, with kids at home uh, in lockdown, looking for an excuse to, to buy tickets and maybe even leave the kids at home, but uh, for sure at least uh, go on a holiday at the first opportunity. So, um, you know, I think things will change, but not drastically. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Um, Going to Liam, Brown Hotels is also a newcomer in the Greek market. Brown, uh, Brown Hotels is a Tel Aviv-based hospitality group known for its cutting edge uh, boutique hotels. Uh, uh, Brown has hotels uh, in um, the Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Croatia, and now they are expanding in Cyprus, Germany, and Greece. Uh, their entry in, in the Greek market was marked by uh, the opening of uh, Brown Acropole in the heart of Athens in Ammonia Square. And they are progressing with the development of 11 uh, sites, 11 units uh, in Athens and Thessaloniki. Uh, Leon is the founder and co-owner of Brown Hotels and I, I read the great supporter of Chris, uh, uh, not only as an investor. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much. You also share your experience uh, in Greece and give us also your thoughts on how the hospitality environment will look uh, like uh, post-pandemic? Um, what would be the, the trends? Well, uh, thank you, Zeni. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a beautiful panel, and I feel privileged to be uh, surrounded by uh, this kind of uh, caliber. But uh, you said something about us being newcomers, and I feel so Greek. Uh, we're just uh, we're looking at the uh, school for our, for our family, for our kids. So. It's, uh, I feel totally at home, uh, totally not an, uh, a newcomer. And uh, I also 
loved what he said about ammonia being in the center, in the center of, uh, of, of Athens. We feel that ammonia needs to be revived. We love this place. So yeah, we're, we're totally in it. Um, we are now featuring, we're in our pipeline. Um, we're looking at over 20 hotels in, uh, that will open in, uh, in the next 18 months with an investment that exceeds way over 100 million euros in equity. Um, all under the brown brand um, in its sub sub brands, the Lighthouse, which is the uh, uh, Lighthouse, the Dave, the Son of a Brown, the Brown, and some other brands. We feel uh, very optimistic. Uh, the pandemic has not harmed or damaged our uh, optimism. On the contrary, we feel that, um, as Darwin said, uh, you know, it's. Uh, the fittest will, uh, will survive. So we feel that the, the most flexible will survive and whoever is open-minded and flexible and can adapt itself to, uh, to the changing world will adapt. Um, we started a beautiful venture, um, which is the Brown Living for long stays for people that uh, want to stay in a hotel for a longer period since we cannot host for a night or, night or two. And it, it was so successful that now we're thinking of converting some of our uh, or new ventures in Greek, new buildings and properties in Greek, in Greece as the uh, as as Brown uh, Living, we feel that so far uh, the investment was very rewarding. Uh, we were offered in one of our for our one of our uh, one of our properties uh, to sell it at three threefold, three times as much as we bought it, and we still decided not to sell. Uh, this is how optimistic and how how much we believe and have full faith in the, in the Greek economy, in the Greek growth. Um, we felt totally welcomed as soon as we arrived. Um, although newcomers, although foreigners, um, we immediately had um, beautiful encounters with the uh, regulations, yes, however bureaucratic. Um, uh, we still feel very, very much welcomed, um, not without challenges, but, uh, we are still very bullish and very optimistic uh, regarding our investment. Um, I'm talking about over 20 new hotels on top of the three hotels that we're now, um, we have already featured from Ermou in the center of, uh, uh, of Athens to the Athenian Riviera, Riviera Cape Sunio, uh, Thessaloniki, and also Limassol and, and uh, Nicosia and other um, um, Cypriot um, um, cities. So yeah, we feel as, as challenged as we are, uh, we still are very happy with the, with the venture. Absolutely. We, we feel very much at home in, in Greece. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, Chloe, um, Lamsa uh, is one of very well-known uh, uh, hotels, uh, Greece, Greek-based hotels uh, company owned by the Las Caritas Family Group. Uh, they are actively engaged in the establishment, operation, and management of hotel complexes. Uh, they have one of the most iconic hotels, luxury hotels, the Grand Bretagne in uh, St. Thomas Square, also King George. And the group also owns the Saratone in Rhodes. There was a new addition in the group, uh, the five-star Athens Capital Hotel, which opens, opened its doors in uh, September, in this September, last September. Uh, Flow is the new face of, uh, uh, in the management of the group. She has been, of course, uh, many years active uh, in, in the sector. And uh, she has a great passion, uh, uh, Arid, uh, for high level hospitality. Arid also the Iron Lady of Hospitality. This is, uh, is what, what I read in the newspaper. So, Chloe, can you give us your insight on what are the top trends? Uh, what do you think that will be the top trends in the hospitality in the post-COVID world? Hi, um, thank you for having me firstly. Um, yes, I mean, Paul touched a little bit on what he thinks we're going to see um, in, the new in the near future um, with regards to sort of leisure travelers and mice um, and things like that. And what we are seeing in our hotels is, is not so much market segments, but sort of how guest priorities have changed um, during this pandemic. And we, we believe that these will lead to some, some trends that 
may not be new, but they will become very important to, to our guests. Um, obviously, the first one um, will come as no surprise. It is cleanliness. Um, guests now are, are, are very strict about what they expect to, to, to see in the hotel. Um, and we have done our utmost to make sure that they feel safe. Um, technology, always important, um, will be even more important going forward. Um, and this sort of ties into the cleanliness, this whole no contact thing that the guest now requires. They want minimum contact um, with, with, I mean, your staff really. So um, we've, we've made a move to contactless technology. Um, check in, check out can be done online. You, you see in lots of restaurants and you will see to our hotels as well, these QR codes, these barcodes for the menu so that you don't have to physically touch anything. Um, uh, it will also come as no surprise that one of the trends that um, I think we will see going forward um, and as ledger travelers return is people um, will place a lot of value on experiences versus sort of just plain luxury. Sure, they want the room to be very nice, but they want you to offer them something that they will remember because, you know, during this very tough year, um, they were sort of unlikely to say, oh, the cap at the GB is, you know, gold plated. Rather, they would remember something that they experienced and how it made them feel. Um, so that's something that we are going to, to work, work towards a lot. Um, I think Leon sort of touched on it. Um, people are looking now for longer stays um, as people have been working from home. All you really need is a good Wi-Fi connection and a laptop. That's also something I think that's going to continue going forward. Um, so we now offer long stay packages, sort of a work away from home. Um, even, even, you know, countries have sort of jumped on this bandwagon with Barbados offering vacation vi visas to di digital nomads. Um, and finally, wellness. This, this has been very trendy the past few years, and I think this is going to be very important. You know, as Paul said, people have been in lockdown for a long time. They're their kids. <laughs> I'm one of them. So as I, when I go somewhere now, um, I want to make sure that they will have, um, you know, I don't know, first class sort of spa treatments that are geared towards relaxation. Um, we now offer yoga by our outdoor pool, um, personal training sessions in the nearby park. Um, so I think these are sort of the kind of things that we will see going forward and that's what we're predicting and we've sort of geared our hotels to, to offer our guests. Um, we are optimistic, as Paul said, leisure will come back first. People are desperate to, to travel. I mean, we were just discussing this before we came on, how much we've missed traveling and how much we've taken it for granted. Um, mice, as he said, it will be what we're doing here, sort of digital hybrid sort of events. Corporate, I don't think I even need to discuss corporate. I mean, that's, I don't know if that will ever return with, with everyone sort of acknowledging that you don't have to travel all the time. Um, and nobody sort of mentioned cruises. I know everyone is bullish, but for us, um, since most of our hotels are based in Athens, um, Cruise business was vital, especially in the summer, and that is going to be that's going to be an issue for whoever has hotels in Athens in the near term future, until people feel safe, you know, until there's a widespread vaccine, until there's rapid testing, until there's whatever it, whatever there needs to be to make people feel safe to go back on on cruises. Um, so that's sort of where where we stand with with our hotels, um, Sheraton Rhodes Resort. Um, resorts, much, much likelier. We saw it this summer. They did much better than city hotels. People want to be outside. They want to be near nature. They want to be in less densely populated areas. So for roads, we are more sort of bullish, as, as, um, as was said previously. Um, Athens, we will need to work on a little, little bit harder, but no doubt um, we, are, we are also optimistic that eventually business will return to, to where it was. So there, you think that the resort uh, hotels will make a comeback? Uh, this is what we uh, believe, that in the in the shorter term, resorts will be more popular um, than, than, you know, obviously densely populated areas while people are still weary. Great, we will discuss this more. Uh, let me uh, give uh, Andres also the opportunity to uh, <laughs> 
and talk about uh, the, uh, the car leasing uh, sector. Uh, Avis uh, is one, uh, is the first rental company in Greece, uh, operating since the 60s and 1960s. Uh, it has a wide net network of eight, um, 80 car rental stations, a fleet that exceeds 38,000 vehicles and 500 specialized employees. Uh, recently, Avis uh, uh, I was involved in a in impressive transaction. It, it has secured 120 million euros in funding through a securitization uh, transaction. And the issue has, was covered by three international organizations, amongst them AIF and uh, EB, EBRD. Uh, Andres is the CEO of ABIS since November 2014 and the inspirer of ABIS uh, innovative uh, strategic actions. Andreas, uh, can you? give us an insight of the market post-COVID and tell us what is the key to staying afloat? Thank you, Tanya. Um, I think we already covered a lot of the uh, issues and how the market will look after COVID. I mean, just to uh, a little bit further out to what uh, Chloe just said, there are some trends that uh, already existed, but uh, now accelerated through the COVID. And we're probably uh, gonna see them for some time. Uh, as Paul said, uh, humanity adapts, but uh, it's time we adapt in a different way or uh, we adopt new ways of doing things. For instance, uh, and I, I strongly believe that people for uh, some time after, uh, after vaccination, let's say, will feel a little bit strange to gather in uh, big crowds, at least for some time until they feel more safe and uh, if they are convinced uh, that there is something they can do. Um, but technology will be key in any uh, service offering. And uh, as you said, Avis has the biggest fleet in Greece. Apart from leasing, what is more relevant in, uh, in uh, tourism and hospitality interest is the rental business. About 15% uh, of uh, leisure travelers uh, make a rental. And if, if you see that we have groups of three or four, that is almost half of them make a rental, so it's important service uh, for the sector. Uh, it allows mobility and um, it offers them um, an opportunity to have better experience of the place they visit. Uh, touchless delivery or uh, let's say COVID free or uh, bacteria free rental would be more important. I mean, uh, people uh, would prefer to rent a car without meeting anybody, avoiding uh, contact even after vaccinations, we think. And this is something that uh, actually in, intrigues us and part of the funding you just mentioned which is uh, actually the first investment grade funding for Greece uh, after 10 years which is uh, and in fact makes us proud that uh, we managed to invite international investors to trust the uh, uh, actually Greek company of course uh, Avis budget group participates in the company uh, as a shareholder but we operate as a Greek company and uh, the part of this fund uh, part of these funds will be used to um, apply technology in a number of services we're doing, including um, rental uh, as you need, uh, including uh, mobility service from an hour to uh, some days. And of course, uh, guaranteed that um, the vehicles are checked and uh, already prepared uh, to be uh, to the most hygienic rules. So for us, the day after, of course, uh, laser and travel will, uh, will be and come back um, faster than anything else, uh, because people, as you said, as our colleagues said here, are crazy to travel. Uh, however, the way you're going to travel and uh, the trends we're going to employ during travel will be uh, quite different from the ones we used to be. We believe that um, uh, new travelers especially would appreciate uh, the efforts from the service providers to offer them a more, let's say, private experience, a more uh, less uh, less crowdy experience, and uh, more or less uh, when the, you need to convince them that you are at most careful about their health and uh, their well-being. These are things that are going to prevail in the years to come. Many thanks, Andrea. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, what? do you think will be the challenges? Uh, you all said that uh, uh, 
I mean, and it's of course the tourism will not be a luxury. Uh, traveling will be a need after all, all uh, after them all being restricted. So there, uh, what's, what are the challenges that the industry that the industry has in front of uh, as industry participants you have in front of you uh, in the short term? And what do you think there are the, the opportunities? Because uh, even this bad thing brings opportunities. Alejandro, you want to? Yes, thank you. Um, in, I mean, the big challenges that, that I think this has um, in the lesser um, market and, 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 and just uh, allow me to go a little bit to the real estate market. I mean, today Greece is starting to be an institutional market but as it happened in Spain around 10, 12 years ago, I mean, the leisure asset class was not a real institutional asset class, you know? I mean, it really took uh, like three, four, five years um, in, uh, where in, in investors, and today, for instance, here we have Heinz and Henderson, you know, we have uh, London and Regional, we have us, Blackstone, you know, but the reality is that little by little, I think this is gonna become uh, an institutional market, we're going to see much more transactions and to win liquidity. And these for investors are quite important. We are seeing that in other markets, Greece is still a, a challenge, you know. So I really think that uh, in terms of real estate, they have to grow this institutional environment and, and, and obviously to be a much more liquid market that I think they, I mean, uh, with, the, with the interest that we are seeing in the, with the, I mean, in the market, I'm sure Greece in a short period of time, you know, will become that that institutional market that is needed in order to have enough transactions to make the market more interesting for everyone. Then, in terms of in terms of the product, you know, I really think that Greece, um, 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 one of the big challenges is that they have to reposition a little bit the country. I really think that they are doing a very good job because um, instead of trying to bring more people they're trying to reposition a little bit their hotels. You know, I really think that it's much more important to unlock the value you know, of the hotels through the repositioning than to really build more hotels, more rooms and to bring more people. You know? So um, I really think that the government is following that direction. It's very important, you know, I mean, that reposition to really get value in what you have instead of building more, I mean, in that aspect, you know? And then another challenge in my opinion is connectivity. Um, uh, obviously, in Greece, as it happens in our country, but in general, in Southern Europe, in all the destinations, connectivity is key because without con connectivity, I mean, we don't have business. And, and it's still a little bit weak. You know, it's true that uh, little by little, you know, we're seeing more investments, uh, better airports, uh, but to really help good airlines, good distributors coming to Greece and assure you know, that that's going to happen, you know, that's very important in order, I mean, to continue invest, to continue transform and to bring the people that, that I think we want, you know. So, I don't know, I mean, that's in my opinion, the main challenge that, that, that you have. And, and, and by the way, we have exactly the same ones in Spain and in general, it's true that Spain is becoming a more institutional market, at, le at least in leisure in the last years, but it's only, it's only something that happens in the last five to 10 years, you know? I mean, in, in 10 years, no one wanted to have something in Tenerife or something, you know? They, everyone wanted to have something in Madrid and Barcelona, that's all, you know? So little by little, I think Greece is gonna become an institutional market. Okay? Thank you. So Paul, I'm giving you the opportunity to disagree with uh, Alejandro, if you want. Um, can you also tell us which are the challenges that we are facing? I think. And uh, what are the opportunities? Do you think that Greece remains an attractive option for investors uh, post uh, pandemic? I would love to disagree. I think it makes for a more interesting panel, but unfortunately, <laughs> I haven't found something yet to disagree with. Um, I think to, to pick up a little bit on what Alejandro mentioned on the liquidity and becoming an institutional market, I think that cannot be uh, overstated. I think um, that is critical, not just for hospitality, but also as Heinz is active in other sectors for office, retail, everything. Uh, to become an institutional market for Greece is a, uh, a massive step forward. The, uh, the, the amount of capital that will come once Greece is on the radar uh, not just opportunistic players, but institutional players, it will be a game changer. 
the problem with that is that it's a little bit of a chicken and egg problem. So uh, for institutional players to come, they need institutional product, which means uh, large tickets. Um, so you need scale and uh, good quality. So that is what's lacking. And I think we, everyone on this panel, uh, are doing their part to create the product, uh, which, is, which does have scale, which is branded. It is what institutional investors look for so that, you know, we're making the start so that uh, it will be attractive for the institutional players to come in the next uh, five to 10 years. And we, we hope they do because that's who we plan to exit to. So uh, it, it is important for us as well. I think in terms of challenges, I mean, maybe it's uh, stating the obvious, but I think the short-term challenge is liquidity, cash flow, and surviving till things get better because, you know, uh, I think we still have a few difficult months ahead of us. Uh, despite the, the light at the end of the tunnel with vaccines, there's still liquidity issues to deal with, um, at least for the next, uh, you know, four to six months. Um, and I think that means, you know, maintaining good relationships with banks, with your partners, with uh, the, the market, with your suppliers, because you have to kind of hold your breath a little bit longer and then we're almost out. Um, in terms of long-term challenges, honestly, I am very, very bullish uh, on Greece. I think um, I don't see I don't see any fundamental challenges more than there were before. Um, I think that what's different about the the COVID crisis is that it happened to everyone. So it's not one where Greece is singled out. Um, I remember the days when you, I had to uh, explain to our investment committee who's in London or Houston about all the, uh, the things happening in Greece. This time around, it's quite easy. It's happening everywhere. So uh, Greece, I don't think, is competitively disadvantaged in any way. Uh, and if anything, I think has proven itself uh, a, a very responsible uh, nation and how it's handled the pandemic. So if anything, I think we, we come out of it a little bit stronger. So um, I, see, uh, I see only opportunity. And I think maybe just uh, touching on, you know, the country being a business friendly environment. Again, I think that is something new. Um, I think that is something that investors should really understand and uh, touch and feel because it's, it's, it's critical to making an investment decision in Greece and the, the government um, and how supportive it is uh, that you know, investment in FDI is the only way out. You know, that mantra, it's clear. Um, I think having hit the cliff has made it easy that this is the only way out. And the, the level of focus, attention, and uh, you know, singular mindset to make that happen in the government is, um, is nothing short of amazing. And I say that having worked before in the US, having worked in London, in Europe, we have Heinz offices elsewhere. Uh, you know, the, the, the amount of attention and uh, support that the government has for FDI and investment uh, is, is hard to, under, to understate. So um, that's very, very important. Thank you. And I Thank see that as one of the things. Thank you very much. So we don't have uh, enough time. I wish uh, to ask uh, Leon and Flo and Andreas to make a final remark uh, on uh, the opportunities or the challenges, whatever you wish. Uh, Leon? Hi, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be very short and quick. Um, I think that the main challenge for us, as bullish as we are, is the gap between the um, uh, image of Mykonos and Santorini and the high um, spending uh, circle uh, when they come to Athens and the infrastructure or to Thessaloniki and the infrastructure, although food is great and culture is great, is, is still lacking. And I think that the government is doing wonderfully. We're, we're in uh, direct contact with the Ministry of, in, um, of Investment and of Tourism and the mayor. Uh, we'd like to introduce our 
brown, you know, our brown essence, the bars and the clubs and the hip uh, crowd and to cater to our kind of um, uh, crowd. And, um, and we've reached great agreements with the great bars and the great uh, culinary institutions of, in Greece so that um, it will be it. At the same time, there's some, some kind of a gap and I, I'm, I'm, I'm super bullish because I think that this gap is now being bridged um, uh, beautifully. It'll take a year or two more but uh, I'm, I'm, as I said before, I'm very optimistic for the brown uh, penetration into Greece. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you. Um, I will try and be very brief as well. I mean, I, I just wanna sort of, it was touched upon a little bit um, by Paul and then Leon about infrastructure. I mean, some of um, Greece's problems have nothing to do with the pandemic. They existed before the pandemic. Um, and yes, some steps are being taken in the right direction, but I still think we need a lot more work in infrastructure. We need to work quite hard on our seasonality. Greece is still a very seasonal um, destination. Uh, I don't think enough is being done to sort of protect our natural beauties and, and to protect our environment. Um, there isn't a very stable legal urban framework for investment. Um, it keeps changing depending on the government. So I think these are all things that, that do, we do need to look at going forward so that we can be a, a very attractive um, investment environment. Thank you. Thank you. Andreas? I, I, I think the biggest challenge is how to deal with hyper-tourism. I mean, this uh, congestion we, we see every July and August and uh, the typical product we sell, which is uh, sea, sun and uh, food, which is not bad, of course, but uh, the country has so many other beauties. And the only way to expand tourism and actually help all this, I mean, deal with fragmentation in any aspect of, uh, of the product offering. For instance, in my own uh, car rental business, we have 3000 businesses offering the service. It's almost impossible uh, to offer such a service, but it, it makes sense to have 3000 businesses if someone can open a business, make a lot of money for just two months and then sit around. But if you have to deal with, uh, you know, a, a, a countrywide uh, tourism and the tourism that starts in May and ends in November, and uh, also maybe winter tourism, and this is actually governmental initiatives uh, that uh, we need to take in uh, conjunction with uh, some specific investments in order to highlight this part of the of the country and also the adventure tourism. We have beautiful places. I'm sorry, we have to speed up. Okay, thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm just closing that. I mean, this is this key challenge for the country in order to really upgrade uh, the tourist product. Thank you, Nikos. Thank you. Thank you very much, all. Uh, we do not have time to take questions, but the Capital Link chat room is designated uh, as a general uh, chat room, and you can take your questions there. Uh, thank you very much, all. Thank and, you very uh, much. Stay safe. Bye bye. Thank you. Great panel.